Hi there, my beautiful subscribers. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Tina from TinaHills.com and this is my Leo New Moon update. And it's actually a very fantastic new moon, a perfect new moon, but very Martian. So it's got a very prominent Mars signature and it's happening on the 18th or 19th, depending on where you are in which part of the world and it's happening on the 26th degree 26 35 minutes so we round it off to 27 degrees okay now uh this new moon what is a new moon when the sun and moon conjunct or are together in a particular sign okay so you get one new moon uh once a year you get one uh, full moon once a year in your particular sign so leo this is for you if you're leo sun if you're leo uh rising leo moon whatever it's it's your time now to set that intention if you want to discover how to set that intention what to uh, what energies to work with please consult me for a reading i not only do astrology i help you establish a connection to the planets so that is is uh, how i am different that is how i classify my niche so kindly email me for more information or just whatsapp me on my number now uh there is a fiery trine happening with the sun and moon are in the fixed fire masculine sign of Leo, a bestial sign again. And it is trining Mars. Mars who's in rulership and is about to go retrograde in September. So this trine, and as I said, the trines happen in the same element. So this is a fire sign, a fire activation. Fire deals with creativity, inspiration, passion, and all of that, okay? Now, uh, we have the moon in Leo. And remember, moon has no essential dignity in a fire sign. And the moon is ever fluctuating. And Leo is a fixed fire masculine sign. And Luna is cold and moist, okay and she shines with the light of the sun so there is a deep connection there so uh, if you have a leo sun then if you're born in the day you are probably more outgoing but if you are born in the night then you're probably more introverted so those of you leos that keep telling me that you know i'm a leo but i'm not extroverted uh, or anything it could be that you have a saturn on your rising if you're a leo rising it, it could simply be that you're a night Leo. And Leo moons uh, are act pretty similar to uh, a Leo sun at, born at night. So Luna has no essential dignity in the fixed fire sign of Leo Yang. But the sun is at home. So he's very, very comfortable and he's having a beautiful conversation with Mars, who's his friend. Okay, Sun, Mars are both fire. Although Mars is considered traditionally a malefic, but once you balance Mars, you know how to take action. Correct action is what gets us going, you know. Now, uh, Mars also rules this lunation by term. So in ancient uh, Hellenistic astrology, there are 50 terms and each planet owns about five, six uh, degrees of each sign. Okay, so uh, Mars basically also rules the decan three of Leo by the triplicity system because the first decan is ruled by the sun the second decan is ruled by Jupiter and the third decan is of Leo is ruled by Mars. So we have a very prominent Martian signature by Mars ruling this lunation uh, via term as well as via triplicity. So this gives us a very prominent Martian signature. 2020 is actually very Martian if you ask me. <coughs> Sorry. 
Now, think of that explosion that happened in Beirut and Lebanon, okay? This lunation can, and I, and I had predicted in my Aquarius uh, uh, full moon video that there will be earthquakes and this uh, this uh, explosion in Beru was equal to uh, an earthquake of uh, five on the Richter scale, four or five on the Richter scale. So we did have a huge explosion as well as earthquake. Okay, so this, this is like a, a lot of fire. So burn, baby, burn. That's what we are going to do. Burn, baby, burn with this energy if you don't know how to use it. So Mercury is also conjunct the new moon and this is especially relevant for uh, people who are Gemini rising or Virgo rising. Uh, Mercury is actually going through a rebirth and when Mercury is conjunct the new moon you can really work on manifesting or at least sowing the seeds. So you reap the rewards in six months when the full moon happens in Leo. Don't forget that. Aquarius season, the full moon is in Leo. Leo season, the full moon is in Aquarius. Okay. So uh, what energies can we expect with this drama, flamboyance, okay, glamour, glitz. This is Leo. Uh, the the lion but remember the lion and the lioness behave differently okay inherently there's a difference in their behavioral uh, attributes okay now uh, as I said that military power is greatly emphasized on this particular degree because also we have such a prominent Martian signature as well as Mars is squaring Saturn and Pluto and all this Capricorn stellium is getting super activated. Okay, so we've got leaders coming out of the woodwork. We identify leaders. Yes, we had Kamala Harris, whether you like her or not. She got the, uh, the nomination from Biden, Biden or whatever. So yes, leaders coming out of the woodwork because Leo new moon it's always about leadership and it's always about celebration too because the sun illuminates things and and makes you celebrate things think of spring the abundance okay sun is exalted in aries and aries is the domain of mars so so there is this inherent friendship that these two celestial bodies share mars the red planet and sun is flaming red okay or orange yellow now, uh, there's going to be a tremendous necessity to assert dominance or, or have power plays because, you know, this is, we're talking about Mars, Saturn, Pluto, all of these heavyweights being involved with the sun and the moon and, and Uranus is squaring Leo by sign, okay, uh, because uh, he's in Taurus. So, and Uranus is bringing out genetic memory and our interaction with the Earth, if you ask me the truth. And 2021 will pretty much be colored with the vibe of uh, Saturn and Uranus being square uh, in the signs of Taurus and uh, uh, Aquarius. Okay. Now, we've got Leo. Let's understand Leo a bit better. It's masculine, so it's yang. So Luna is, of course, not in her feminine best, so she has no essential dignity. Uh, ruled by the sun, I told you, it's a fire element. So there's a very fiery component to Leo. Uh, temperate, wise, stable. Think of the bonfire or the fire of the Havan. Uh, Agni Kund. It's... Uh, or the dhuni, how the, the dhuni burns. Think of Mars, Aries is a matchstick. But Leo is the dhuni. Okay, Leo is a bonfire which uh, brings people together. It's fixed, so there's, uh, you know, very little leeway to give and take. It's very stubborn, very fixed and uh, very solid. But there is also a changeable attribute to Leo. Why? Because it's fire. 
and fire scatters yes fixed fire does not scatter like uh, you know mutable probably like sag but fire scatters so this is a very fiery scattery and air scatters too but fire and air they scatter okay uh, and mars signature makes it very very dry so there's a very dry component to this staying hydrated is going to be very important okay uh, it leo is of a governing nature because it deals with leaders rulers and um, nobility aristocracy okay if the sun is well placed with the leo ascendant the the, the native is very dignified I have a Leo son and my son is in the 12th house. So it's 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 like that. It's if you see that the and it's not a really dignified son because 12th house son problematic. But you know, if you do have a very powerful exalted son say in Aries and here yeah, you're a supreme leader, you know, go get a very militaristic I mean, I have my natal Mercury on this degree, on the 27th degree of Leo, and my Saturn on the 29-29 of Leo, conjunct the fixed star regulus. So, uh, like I said, the, the, the problem with Leo is egoism, narcissism, okay? Uh, gaslighting, ghosting, you know? loves flattery if you want to get to a leo if you want to get to a taurus feed them if you want to get to a leo flatter them and they also have a very inflated sense of self so think of the sun when the sun becomes a red uh, gas joint it's an inflated ego so everything burns in its vicinity but when the sun becomes a white dwarf everything dies because nothing is sustainable but when the sun is just right it sustains life so, so that is the the difference between a healthy sense of I am and uh, the egoic structure which is myavic actually it's not real it's illusory so uh, once we control the dominance the domineering attitude the the fake pride yes pride can be a very powerful emotion but, you know, too much of it can be very, very destructive, right? So we've got uh, this uh, lunation happening on the 26th degree. This is really a very powerful uh, lunation that's going to bring about a lot of uh, change, okay? A lot of change. So, like I told you that there are 50 terms in Hellenistic astrology and Mars rules the last six of Leo. Okay, the final six degrees of Leo, they belong to Mars. So, uh, the term signification is very interesting because that is the energy that is going to play out during this lunation. Very base and monstrous, destructive, injured, uh, torpid, consumed, unlucky. So, there is an unlucky energy that is all pervasive, th this lunation. You know, I like to give it how it is. But there's tons of shift happening in Aries and honestly, uh, the sun and the moon are activating all of that uh, by the fiery trine to Mars. We have Aries, uh, the, the goddess of discord. Okay, we've got uh, Mars, we've got Black Moon Lilith, we've got Chiron, all of them in the cardinal fire sign ruled by Mars. That's Aries. All of them are in Aries, right? And Mars is applying a square to Saturn. I've already made a Mars square Saturn video, so catch that. Uh, this, this lunation, the sun and the moon are in harmony with Rahu, with the North Node. And honestly, if you look at the Mars square Saturn, you will see that Mars is very, very hot. Okay, very, very dry. Saturn is very, very cold, very, very dry. That's why they're the, the malefics. There's no moderation with their energy. They're extremes and that can be destructive because human beings actually require moderation. 
okay? <coughs> now let us discover uh, the fixed stars on the 27 degrees of Leo. We've got Alphard. Alphard is a very fortunate fixed star, is of the nature of Saturn and Mars. Again, amplifying this, this square of Saturn and Mars and, and bringing this energy into collective consciousness, okay? Then Adafera. Adafera is unfortunate. It makes one very boisterous. It is of the nature of Saturn and Mercury. It makes one very verbose, very loquacious. And the third one, which is a neutral um, fixed star, it is Aljaba. And it is also of the nature of Saturn and Mercury. So interestingly, we have three uh, fixed stars activated. One fortunate, one unfortunate, one neutral. So you see how, how the, the, the cosmos plays its celestial choir. It's beautiful, actually. So uh, Alphard bring, gives wisdom. When the sun and moon are conjunct apart, we have wisdom, we have musical and artistic abilities. We also have a keen understanding of the human nature and the human psyche. Strong passions. Okay, that's what Alphard brings. And very less control over the self. So lack of self-control. Okay, hedonism, hedonistic, immorality can be expected. Sudden death by poison or drowning. Keep that in mind. Leo celebrity conjunct alpha, new moon conjunct alpha, death of celebrity by drowning or uh, by poison. It can also be suicide, actually. I'll get to that. Uh, problems with love, problems with law, uh, illicit love affairs, drugs, and uh, alpha rules slightly below the top of the kidney. Okay, because Adafera rules the top of the kidneys. We'll get to that. Adafera deals with crime, stealing, lying, suicide. That's why I was saying that celebrities could be dying by suicide. Okay. Uh, Al Jaba brings wealth, sound judgment. Okay. Cleverness, violent, selfish. The name makes the native selfish. So danger, loss, mutiny, uh, and this rules the top of the kidney. Like I said, uh, the other fera rules the top of the kidneys, and um, uh, Alphard rules just below the top of the kidneys. So these are parts of the body that will be sensitive with this new moon, because the sun and the moon and Mars are they are all activating these fixed stars. And all this, this emanation in 3D is from the fixed stars by the energy of Saturn, who's bringing to us the energies of the fixed star, okay? Now, uh, this is the 12th mansion of the moon, and it's called Al-Sarfa, Al This means change or division, so change or diversion. Okay, so we can immediately see that because of this 12th month of the moon, we are going to experience a monumental change in the way we experience things. Okay, and this uh, Mars and Pluto square will also be uh, happening one last time immediately after the Saturn and Jupiter conjunction. So it's, it's really very prophetic. What's coming through, uh, the, the, what, what I channel from Mars and Pluto, it's very prophetic. 21, and this 12th mansion, uh, or the 12th mansion of the moon, al Sarfa, starts from 21 of Leo, 21, 26 of Leo, to 4, 17 of Virgo, the 12th mansion of the moon. The talismanic image is a man and a dragon. Fighting. I always think of the Game of Thrones series and, uh, you know, Targaryens fighting with dragons or maybe Robert Baratheon and the rest fighting with a dragon or, you know, just something crazy like that. So the talismanic image is a man fighting with the dragon or Kundalini Shakti, actually. So uh, the, the talismanic properties are to separate lovers, to increase harvest to plant, uh, 
properly and plants prosper with this manzil by the way it's got a tremendous connection to agriculture which i cannot stress enough and because i have my mercury on the 27th degree and mercury is the ruler of my rising i feel compelled to understand agriculture and i've been very interested in hydroponic aquaponics and aeroponics so uh, i'll get to the agriculture bit in greater detail a bit later so this uh, talismanic talismanic properties of this manzil can also destroy lovers as i said separate them destroy riches and and can also bring forth a resurrection of the loyalty of allies so you know it's it's a very powerful manzil actually so i was looking through uh, to do uh, benefic work uh, with this manzil and i noticed that it works best with agriculture so if you're a farmer this is the time to sow this is the time to sow if you're a plant lady or a plant man this is the time to sow your seeds during this uh, new moon you know and uh, the spirit of this manzil is abdizu or abdizuel a b d i z u abdizu or abdizuel is the spirit of this mansion now uh, a very very strong pull towards agriculture and uh, this like i said that each manzil has a talismanic property and oh. and when going through the pico tricks i discovered that the 12th manzil it's it's the ultimate one for farmers it's the ultimate one for resurrection of uh, food crops to uh, you know maybe d- devote energy to uh, conserving food crops or seeds okay please can you go from here okay so it's a, it's a very powerful vibration when it comes to food and agriculture and this is something we need to uh, tune into because we need to feed the world no one must go hungry so this is my intention my spell for this new moon is uh, for gaia for agriculture so that everybody gets to eat okay now uh, Alpha is noted for its green thumb. I cannot stress enough. Leo Decan three is ruled by Mars. I explained to you the triplicity system. The tarot was seven of wands. Now, when you see seven of wands, honestly, what do you think? You immediately think of one wand uh, protecting or fighting against the six wands. Okay, so so people are coming to attack you, and you're having to. protect yourself you are being attacked and you're defending okay you're defending you're defending so as i said there is going to be confrontation when mars is such a key uh, energy signature there is going to be confrontation we cannot avoid that i was just looking for this card and believe me i uh, took it out but then i just suddenly but So we've got the ten of wands. We've got all of that, but uh, okay. So Austin uh, Austin Kopak says that uh, this day can is uh, has an un- unconquerable heart, and that is the crux of the power of this day can. This this unbelievable power that resides within that we can tune into and believe in. My Mercury is on this degree. and uh, it's my uh, ascendant lord sort of a ruler of my nativity and believe me i'm a fighter i don't give up i i keep on keep on keep on at it so this is the energy and i found it okay the the seven of wands is this energy of having to fight having to put up a fight The source of power is the tremendous uh, sense of uh, the tremendous powerful heart, the heart of the lion. I would say, okay. Now, uh, so when we talk about the term and the the day can, so we can think of this as a Mars uh, lunation. So these natives, 
will be Martian Leos. Okay, more Aries Leos. Okay, a combination. Now, the Sabian symbol of 27 degrees of Leo is daybreak. And I thought immediately about luminosity. Okay, luminosity, my people. Things coming to illumination. Okay. Uh, an awakening from the darkness, from the dark night of the soul. Becoming aware of the sun is when daybreak happens. And when we look at the significations of the sun, we see uh, wisdom, a raw primeval wisdom. Okay? Because the sun literally is intelligence, soul intelligence, karmic intelligence. Okay? Uh, it is the dawn of a new day, this lunation, no matter how unfortunate the energies of fixed stars could bring. Okay. So, uh, if you look at which house this falls for you, you will be able to bring forth this, this new energy a lot easier. So, consider booking a reading. Now, I think personally that something will come to light. Something about celebrities, something about the way, the way we shine, the way we uh, achieve our soul karma, something, you know, individually as well as collectively, will come into illumination, right? Uh, I firmly believe that we are on a threshold of a new cycle, a threshold of a very powerful new cycle that's going to change the world. I mean, change our understanding of, of world and reality, okay? Now, uh, since the moon is ruled by the sun and the Mars, because they're the term and triplicity rulers, uh, and the sun is the domicile ruler, the moon has no dignity. Because anytime the moon touches a malefic, if she is ruled by uh, the malefic in the, by face or term, then it's a problem. She's an afflicted moon, right? So, uh, and interestingly, no planet is exalted and no planet is in fall in Leo. And, and the sun rules Leo. So it's, it's very beautiful, okay? Saturn is in detriment, however, if you look at it, because Saturn rules Aquarius. So Saturn is actually in detriment in the fire sign of Leo, okay? So I'm going to give you very quick tarot reads because I don't want to go into great detail. I've given you a very detailed astrology. So Aries, the new moon is in your fifth and Mars is of course in your first house. So look for your sun, moon rising and uh, you will be able to piece together the story. Okay, so Aries, we have for you the five of wands, strife, competitiveness, it's, it's, it can be nerve wracking and you probably feel pushed, you feel like, you know, people are competing with you, you could be acting extremely competitive also because, you know, you've got this uh, Leo and Leo is like your fifth house, so it could also be about a creative project or a loved one that you behave in this manner. So, and I, I was correct. I think for some of you, Leo's is an air sign person. And, and, and for, not Leo's, Aries, it's an air sign person. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. And you're sort of being smitten or you're fighting with that person, trying to establish boundaries. Okay. Now, moving on to Taurus, 4th and 12th, new moon, and uh, of course, uh, it's in your 4th, and Mars is in your 12th. Mars in the 12th can be quite something. Retrograde in Taurus, you're going to have it quite difficult this year, because you've got that Uranus, and you've got that Mars retrograding in the 12th. So, let's see. Queen of Wands, a sort of Leo kind of person that you're attracted to or you're working with or you're interested in, you've become friends with. This could also be you, Taurus, connecting with your sensuality, with uh, the, uh, the feminine that is within you and really understanding uh, the tremendous 
power that you have. Now you've got the Knight of Wands in reverse and we've got the Queen of Wands. So there is a, a, some sort of, and Knights are impulsive. Queens are very grounded, they are sure. So there's an impulsive energy that's playing with something that's mature. So whatever it is, uh, Taurus, it's definitely a very interesting time for you. Like I said, that 12,000 Mars and you got all fire cards. So there's definitely a lot uh, going on, a lot more than what uh, we understand. But yeah, so Gemini, 3rd and 11th. New Moon and Sun is in the 3rd and Mars is in the 11th in your larger communities, in the house of your larger communities. And we have for you the nine of wands. So there's a fight that's still left, Gemini. Maybe you have to defend your project. Maybe you have to defend your stance. And, and people are going to attack you. But I think you've got it going because you've got your uh, pieces, like your arsenal, set correctly. So you will be able to uh, take up whatever's happening, okay? Your clarifier is the last, which is the card of Leo in reverse. So Gemini, there's definitely some kind of discrepancy with this. And, and you're not able to maybe con control your inner impulses, your id impulses. And, and they're sort of going out of hand and you feel attacked. So third house siblings and 11th house larger communities. So there's definitely a powerful energy that's going there, like the siblings uh, introduce you to a new group, possible. Cancer, second and ten. This is about income and social prestige, social respect, Cancer. And for you, I have the four of wands, all wands I am picking. Celebration, proposal, uh, buying that new house, moving to that country, getting the visas through Cancer, second and ten. Very powerful message from spirit. I'm so glad I chose that card for you, Cancer. And this is the four of pentacles in reverse. So someone who is being miserly towards you lets you have it. Whatever it is, it lets you have it. You know, and finally you're like, okay, uh, I'm going to have it. Leo, it's your first and ninth house. So first house is the sense of is your sense of self you know as I am so that is getting activated set your intentions and you are moving away from turbulent waters okay it's all right you're moving away from turbulent waters do not fret let's see the message from let's see your clarifier it's it's been problematic with your thoughts but so this is the eight of uh, cups. You've got to walk away from something, Leo. And we see the six and we see the eight play out. Both are about walking away. So there's this definitely something about you walking away. Virgo, this is your 12th and your 8th house. 12th house of incarceration, addiction, spirituality, mysticism, you know, luxury hotels and... Uh, Eight house of taxes, secrets, sex, very powerful lunation. And you're working hard, you're honing your skills, and your your feast, your celebration is coming. Your uh, harvest that you're tending to is coming. Some of you, you're working under someone and you're hopelessly attracted to them. And Virgo have the sun in reverse. So this is definitely uh, this 12th house activation with the 8th house can bring up uh, childhood abuse. I, I feel I hear childhood abuse for many of you Virgos. It's about letting letting it go now, you know. That's, that's what I feel. Book a consultation if you can. I work with childhood sexual trauma. And uh, it's fantastic actually to heal that. Because I went through something similar. Libra, 11th and 7th. Uh, 11th la larger communities online. 7th partnership, marriage. You can meet someone uh, through an online website like uh, matrimony.com. The Fool in Reverse. Yes, something new is coming. 
maybe marriage, maybe commitment, but don't jump into it. That could be absolutely disastrous if you jump into it, okay? Keep that in mind and uh, remember that if you jump into something, if you're just not careful, it could be disastrous, okay? Now we've got the Six of Pentacles in reverse and this is success, but Six of Pentacles in reverse means success will be late because maybe you're not really looking at all the information. And Venus has just moved into uh, Cancer and that's pretty, pretty amazing for you because Cancer is your 10th house, honestly. Now, uh, don't rush into marriage or commitment, that's all I'm going to say. Scorpio, 10th and 6th. So, uh, your social respect, your social prestige and your everyday work life, it's changing and it's getting activated. I pull the card of Virgo for you, uh, Scorpio, and that is like Virgo's like your 11th house. It's, it's a harmonious uh, sign because your water and Virgo's earth. So it's harmonious by sextile, but this is reverse. So listen to your inner guide, okay, Scorpio. Tune in to your inner guide because a lot of information is coming forth. We've got the Prince of Cups. So this could be literally a, a very powerful love connection or it could be you, Prince of Cups, finally realizing uh, the love you have with, inside, okay? Now moving on to uh, Sag. This is your ninth and fifth house. So ninth house of foreigners. It could be a foreign love story or, you know, just like uh, publish something creative, something that you've written also message is two of cups twin flame romance is coming your way Sagittarius and fret not embrace it it's uh, probably someone you're going to marry because your fourth house you have that Mars retrograding and that ninth house of foreigners so it's probably someone you're going to marry uh, it could be someone you met online let's see what the clarifier has to say Sag, it's a year of changes because you'll be glad when Jupiter, your ruler, is out of um, Capricorn where it is in fall. So we've got the Ten of uh, Pentacles, the reverse. So whatever it is that, you, that you're trying to do, the, the legacy you're trying to create, I think you need to uh, wait a little longer. Till Jupiter moves into Aquarius and has this conjunction with Saturn and you will be able to see things in a new light okay now Aquarius uh, Capricorn 8th and 4th so uh, yeah baby 8th and 4th 8th is where you have this new moon and 4th is where you have Mars so let's see Cappy wow the two of Cups, uh, Twin Flame, Love, Romance, Connection. I just pulled this card. So, wow, that hasn't happened to me in like donkey's years where I pulled the this, this same card twice for two signs. Nice. And the Two of Cups. So, we've got uh, the Eight of Wands, but in reverse. So, whatever it is, Cap, that you're looking to do swiftly, achieve things swiftly, go swiftly, don't. I suggest don't even send that text as yet. Wait. Okay, wait. Saturn is retrograding in your sign on the 27th degree. So this 8th house of secrets where this lunation is happening. Ancestry, you know. Uh, sex. Because 8th house is just actually so deep. The significations of the 8th house. It, it, it could mean so much, you know. So let's see. Uh, okay. Uh, now we have, I guess, Aquarius. Aquarius, we've got 7th and 3rd house activation. 7th is Leo, of course, where you have the new moon. So marriage, you know, you can renew your vows. You can propose to someone. And um, uh, this is, of course, Leo. And the 3rd house is, of course, uh, Aries for you, Aquarius. And 3rd house is siblings neighborhood 
maybe a car also. Wow, we've got the Four of Swords in reverse for your Aquarius. So it's a period of healing. It's a period of convalescence. It's a period of uh, just being, okay? Not rushing into anything. 